From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report, our top stories this week. We look at some innovative and decorative building designs made out of concrete. We speak to the South African Post Office about its automation and modernization aspirations. And Telcom and AT&T sign a memorandum of understanding to accelerate African expansion. The benefits of concrete are numerous for architectural and general design purposes. Beth Shirley reports. No longer is concrete merely dull, grey and boring. Daniel van der Merwe discusses the inherent sustainability and beauty of the material. You're talking about a material that's timeless, a material that's 5,000 years old, but also a material that is contemporary. The beauty of concrete is the fact uh, that not only is it a very cost-effective material to use, but in terms of the technology that advances the innovations, um, concrete is been made to perform and do things which even 10 years ago would have been impossible. It's an excellent material, uh, construction material, in terms of issues of sustainability because uh, of its unique qualities um, as a thermal mass building element. Van der Merwe explains that concrete is applicable in many design applications. Here you're talking about a material that's starting to approach the properties of steel. You can go create extremely thin, lightweight, extremely strong concrete structures. Uh, Traditionally, if you could achieve a concrete strength of say 20 to 25 MPAs, that was kind of the norm. Well, you can achieve concrete strengths now of 120 MPAs. There are other applications to concrete. For example, uh, we're sponsoring a project, an outreach project, where they're making concrete jewelry. Um, And of course, furniture, concrete furniture, concrete uh, um, countertops, um, concrete bowls. So as a material, the applications are limitless. At this stage, the greatest uh, drawback is the the conservative engineers and architects in South Africa who might be seen as too reluctant to use these new technologies and applications for concrete. The South African Post Office acknowledges that its future will require it to embrace rather than resist digital technology. Terence Creamer has the story after the commercial break. Fetch, so fetch! Mitsubishi Fuso, a business's best friend. Some believe the postal service to be in chronic decline as the digital age spreads beyond offices and factories and into households. But the South African Post Office, which handles about 5 million items of post daily, believes there is life yet in the atom-based world. National automation engineer Pierre Rousseau explains. There's always going to be a demand for um, uh, hard document communication. So on the one hand, that is competition, but on the other hand, we embrace a lot of those technologies, such as our hybrid mail system, our e-postal systems, um, and we will be doing more of that in the future. The post office turns over about 5.5 billion rand annually and has generally grown volumes at 4% a year. However, in 2008-9, volumes shrunk and Rousseau says about 126 million rand in capex will be needed over the next two years just to keep pace and innovate. We, we do embrace a lot of the uh, electronic technologies. Uh, for example, if you have a registered letter or a parcel, you can get notification on your cell phone. That's at the lo- uh, lower end. Um, we do have a capability where uh, mail is posted electronically and delivered uh, physically. That's the hybrid mail system. There are other reverse technologies which are coming about right now, which are quite exciting. Uh, For example, if you are not at home and you cannot collect your mail from your mailbox, you will be able, you can now see the outside of the letter, the envelope, on your computer screen, decide whether to discard it or whether to open it. You can uh, choose from your computer terminal to open that letter and see the contents of that. So that was sent as a physical letter and you can read it electronically. The post office also wants to be an early adopter of the so-called S42 global addressing standard, a change that is going to require adaptation 
and usher in the demise of the four-digit postal code. The rollout of that will be in various stages. We expect to have bulk mailers done, uh, most of them, towards the end of this year, 2009. Uh, it will go on. The last 5-10% will continue into 2010, and we expect to be rolling out to the general public during uh, 2010. The new system will probably involve six or seven alphanumerical characters, which will designate everything from country of destination to the physical delivery point and route. But Rousseau remains a bit coy about what it will actually look like. There's a, a little bit of competition within the post office as to how the different mail centres in different cities should be uh, coded or classified. Uh, and to uh, bring in a logical structure but still not favouring any one particular city or town, we started uh, numbering from the north. So I think Messina uh, is the first <laughs> in the system and I think Port Elizabeth or George uh, is somewhere now near the end. Two major telecoms companies have teamed up to provide improved products and services to corporations moving into Africa. Christy van der Mava reports. Telecommunications in Africa is an impressive growth story. Business the world over wants to be in Africa. And as the region develops, the need to connect increases. It's a challenging environment, but telecoms in the region is still expected to grow faster than any other over the next three to five years. Well aware of this, US-based global networks owner and operator AT&T has signed a memorandum of understanding for further collaboration on providing services in Africa with South Africa-based telecoms provider Telcom. So now we'll get down to the hard work uh, and over the next probably minimally two months and probably realistically four or five months, we will get very specific about what that arrangement's going to be, uh, how it's going to work, how we will actually go into the market and face customers, uh, and exactly how we will deliver uh, those products and services either to global multinationals who are coming into the region, which is the, the real interest of AT&T because we already serve those customers, and they're signaling us each day that they're coming into the region and they need to make sure we're prepared to provide the services for them here that we already provide for them in other parts of the world. We know how to do it. We do it around the world. It's going to be some combination of using Telcom South Africa's significant infrastructure to include the data center infrastructure that they're in the process of starting to build uh, in South Africa. and our products that have already been developed and the expertise and knowledge that we have around those products and being able to marry that with their infrastructure and and that's the hard work that has to be uh, put together it's how do you marry the networks our global network and their regional network to make it look seamless uh, to a large customer if you think about the way the emerging nations have evolved in the last five years uh, we certainly heard about china and then we heard about india and then to an uh, even larger extent, we started to hear about the Middle East, and now we're starting to hear about Africa. So to some extent, it's of, of the great regions of the world, it's the one that's coming into this high growth, high development phase uh, last, but it also comes in at a, a very interesting time from a technology point of view. So it's, uh, it's the, the timing to come into Africa is just about perfect for us. To actually choose this continent, and one of the continents where they do it like this, tells me that there's something maybe we as Africans are not even appreciating about our own, our own continent. There's business to be done in Africa, and, the, and Africa is open for business. That's why at and is here. And now for a sneak preview of this week's Engineering News magazine. Read our cover story on the G20's commitment to promote global trade and investment and rejection of protectionism. We report that South Africa's civil engineering sector is still expanding, but growth is expected to be moderate in 2009. And the new Durban airport begins to take shape. And in Mining Weekly this week, read our cover story which details how the Pomodzi Gold liquidators have chosen job preservation over a fire sale. We report that ASX-listed Griffin Minerals will increase the gold resource estimation of its flagship gold project in Burkina Faso to 820,000 ounces. And read how 1 billion rand in liquid assets remains locked up as the JCI and Rand Gold and Exploration merger is voted down. 
That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. Crema Media's engineering news has delivered unmatched insight into the real economy. For breaking news, visit engineeringnews.co.za. The engineering news, not just for engineers.